Good morning. Well, it's noontime now. Before we start on this video here, I went to Big Billy Kelly uh, this morning, and um, I had my breakfast because they open, they close Monday and Tuesday. Today being Wednesday. Now they're wonderful people. And uh, they not only have good food, but they're, they're, they're just great people. That's all I can say. And Kelly's wife waited on me this morning. And she said, we're going to be closed uh, tomorrow. And um, Kelly has to go for some tests. Uh, he has to have a biopsy done, a liver biopsy. And he has cancer, and he's had cancer before, and I think it was something to do with uh, colon cancer, but uh, I think that was taken care of. So uh, our prayers are with him. He's only 50 years old, but cancer has no, no age limit. So let's, let's keep him in our prayers. Okay, now on to... The subject of this video. Well, I've been doing some stinking, I mean thinking, <laughs> um, since I made the video yesterday on the, um, on part two there, everything in the darkle body, uh, the board is in, the wires are temporarily pushed out of the way because I got to pull that board out again because I need to get that resistor in there for the eye uh, motor, voltage drop. But I need to get that mouth trigger to re uh, solenoid. As I showed you, there is a solenoid in there. If you paid attention to the video, that operates the mouth. So when the solenoid is energized down, it opens his mouth. And when it's released, his mouth closes. I need to get that response instantly. Right now, um, as I'm putting his voice, you know, to him, and when I say, hello, my name is Uncle Dorkle, it's supposed to go, hello, my name is Uncle Dorkle. Uh, that's the way it used to work with the push button. Now it's just, hello, my name is Uncle Dorkle. Snap. Closes. Can't have that. Cannot have that. It's got to be a response instantly. As I said, perhaps hundreds of times uh, during one minute of... It, it could be that many times that that thing is energized. So, I drew up a quick and dirty schematic of what I feel may work, but more than likely not, Using an audio amplifier, one or two watts, solid state, monaural. And I may look on eBay to see if I can get something. Or I have in my box, you know, my junk drawer up there, uh, the little stereo amp that came out of them little speakers. You remember I took a set of speakers apart um, to put on that VHS player. And it had a stereo amplifier in it, which was every bit as good as what was in the speaker system. So I didn't need that one. But um, I could probably use that. And my thought was to <clears throat> come off the speakers. Uncle Dorkle's going to have only two speakers. The 5-inch uh, subwoofer that's in his belly and the 2-inch by 4-inch that's in his chest. So... I need a monaural amplifier, and with solid state, you don't parallel the channels. You used to be able to do that with vacuum tube stuff. You don't parallel uh, stereo uh, amplifiers, uh, outputs. They don't like that. So, I can use one channel, not a problem. But I need one or two watts, and I don't think that little thing... Let's see if I can find it here. 
Well, I can't find the amplifier. I don't know when I can't find anything in this shop either. Uh, these are the little 24 volt. They look like a bridge rectifier. They're 24 volt. I had four of them that I got from Jewett City Flea Market uh, several weeks back. Um, I don't think the 24 volt coil will energize and it'll be a pulsating DC. It's all experimental. Chances are it won't work at all. So, anyways, uh, I don't know what happened to it. It's in the shop here somewhere. I just, I, I don't know. I just shove things wherever it fits. But I don't think it's going to be enough power, but it's worth a try. And I would experiment here on the bench. And, you know, as the re audio recording is will be made on a uh, either a cassette or an mp3 player I probably will be done on a cassette I have a lot of these little micro cassette recorders and they have an earphone jack output and uh, they may even have a pause control if not I may have and I'm not sure a small cassette machine that I can put in and then record Uncle Dorkle's voice on a cassette and maybe even the audio output of the tape recorder. And I've got a cassette, a Monaro portable cassette recorder around here somewhere. That would probably work very well. Takes a double A's, has a built-in speaker, so I might be able to use that for Dorkle's voice. In other words, this the skit would have to be scripted because a lot of the stuff that I do, as a matter of fact, all of it, is very little uh, scripting. I might know about what I'm going to say, and a lot of times I'm just going along, and then stuff comes to mind, and I, I do it, you know. But I will have to probably script his, what he's going to say, record it on cassette, and then take the cassette earphone jack output, you know, plug a, a cord into the earphone jack, connect that to the Dorkle speakers. In addition, in parallel with the Dorkle speakers, as I'll show you on the schematic, we'll have a diode which will hopefully, on pulsating DC, operate a relay coil which in turn will contacts will operate the Dorkle solenoid if that's the case that would be perfect I got room in there to put the cassette machine inside the Dorkle body and that would solve everything and then I can use that channel of the remote where it originally controlled the mouth um, solenoid will con control the on and off, you know, the pause control of the cassette, and that's probably how I'll do it. MP3 players, to my knowledge, don't have pause controls. I'll tell you, that's why I like the old good old analog, you know, and that's why when I see something like this, and if it's a small cassette, I always grab it. So if somewhere in this shop I've got a, a cassette player, and also in the main shed, I know I got about four or five of them micro cassette recorders that take uh, two triple A's, I believe. Uh, and I got enough micro cassettes, and I can also use those, and I've used those also. Um, <clears throat> so that's it. So. Okay, I um, ju I just threw together a little quickie circuit here. I'm not a very good drawer, as I said before. I was doing some thinking. Now, way, way back in the late 60s, I built out of an audio amplifier. I had a one-watt 
solid state audio amplifier. Uh, I didn't draw the amplifier here, I just drew, drew the output transformer. And I made what I call for Halloween, I made a, a talking skull. And um, it went and had a rectifier, and then it fired off some LEDs in the eyes. I put eyeballs in the skull and um, I put a red LED in each one. And each time I talked through the microphone, the LEDs would flash in the skull. Okay, I was thinking, I want to put an audio amplifier back inside Uncle Dorkle. And I may even have a pre-recorded voice with an MP3 player sitting inside Uncle Dorkle. When I'm going to do the skit, I can have everything pre-recorded. So in other words, it's not going to be, uh, what do they call it, ad-lib? What I, what I usually do, I usually do stuff off the top of my head when I do my skits. And I don't even really know what's going to be said. I just go along and I do it. But I'll have to script it, say what I want, record it, record what I want on the MP3 player, play it in the audio amplifier that I want to put into Uncle Dorkle, take the speaker, the, the output transformer, in other words, get a, a one or two watt audio amplifier, okay? A one or two watt audio amplifier should be sufficient. Take the secondary, which is probably 4 ohms, maybe 8, solid state, of course. The speakers that I have in Uncle Dorkle now, I have the 5-inch uh, subwoofer, and I have that 2-inch by 4-inch speaker that are both in his chest and abdomen, um, will be hooked up. But in addition to that, <clears throat> I have a diode here. Sure, I'm on camera. I'm always off camera all the time. Uh, diode here, no capacitor because it'd be a delay. Feeding a relay. Now, I don't know what voltage relay I could do with. Uh, relay coils, I believe, a DC, so this would be like a pulsating DC. I have a 24 volt relay. Okay? Now, whether I know, I know I'm not going to generate 24 volts to close the contacts. Here's the contacts here. My theory is, and it's all theory and have not tried it out, we'll drive the, where the push button originally was to drive the mouth solenoid, will be driven by the contacts of the relay that I want to put in here for that. I need quick response, as I said before. I'm not getting that with this wireless thing. So, the wireless feature could be used to turn on the recorder, the player, I should say, the MP3 player, on and off, or a cassette recorder. I have several small cassette recorders that might be easier to key on and off with the wireless receiver, relay, amplifier be on all the time, and each time I want Dorkle to speak, I'll push whatever part of the tape I want to be played. You'll hear it in the speaker. Also, it'll be rectified, drive a relay coil, but again, I don't know if it, that I have a couple of those 24 volt relays that I got at the Jewett City flea market. I think I got four of those little flat things. They look like a bridge rectifier. I showed them to you. But they're 24 volt coil. They may not even energize. So um, I may have to get an AC relay if I'm sure they make them low voltage. And then that might not energize. My hope is that each time he speaks, his mouth will move. It may not be as rapid as me pushing the push button on the wired remote, 
because each time I pushed a button on the wired remote, when I push it, his mouth opened. When I let it go, it immediately closed. That's not what's happening now on the wireless because there's a delay there. It didn't respond immediately when I put a, a LED on that on the bench test. So the way it is now, Uncle Dorkle, when I push in the button down for him to speak, and I say, yes, what do you want? That would be Uncle Dorkle saying. Well, each time when I had the mechanical button there, before I hooked them wirelessly, each time Dorkle would say, for instance, yes, what do you want? Okay, that's, what, that's the response I want out of his mouth. I'm hoping to be able to get at least this much, even if it's just a mouth chatter, like that. That would be fine, but I need to have it respond to the voice, the syllables in the, the voice. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but it can't stay open like this when Uncle Dorkle is talking and saying, what do you want? I don't want that. I don't want what's happening now. So right now it's raining, so we're not doing anything today. That's why I'm making this video. This is just a thought that I had been thinking of since this wiring took place. And if I add a, a capacitor here to kind of smooth out the DC... I can add a small electrolytic here. Um, actually, across the relay coil. I can experiment with that. On the other hand, I could also try to see if the relay will work on AC and eliminate the diode. And basically have the relay across the speaker. As long as the sound is not going to be reduced to a point where we're not going to be able to hear them very well. So that's just a thought. And if anyone else has got any ideas, without me going out and buying a lot of stuff or building things that I can't do because it's too small to work with, I have to go and probably go online and get a monaural, repeat, monaural, I don't want stereo, uh, one or two watt solid state audio amplifier to run those speakers, which are, I believe, the subwoofer's four ohms, I think, the little two inch by four inch is eight ohms, but any four to eight ohm amplifier should work. I wouldn't attempt to pull the relay off of the primary of the solid state audio amplifier, which is probably going to be push pull audio output transistors or an a integrated circuit chip or whatever. I don't want to deal with that. I want to get a ready made amplifier, none of this kit stuff. That's monaural only. I don't want a stereo amp, not for this application. I took away those two side speakers which originally were under the arms, as I showed you in that video, if you did watch it. And I'm only using the two speakers, the one in his belly and the one up in his chest. The belly is the subwoofer. The one up in his chest, the two inch by four inch, could be like a all range, mid range speaker that came out of a amplifier, out of a computer system. I've got that in a little amplifier uh, that, I got the speakers from from that VHS player that had bad speakers in him, and I saved the amplifier, but that's a stereo amp, but I could probably use one channel. But I don't think that little amplifier is more than one watt. I can experiment with that, and I may very well after this video uh, later today. So that's it. That's my... Um, 
that's my brainstorm. I don't, it, like I say, I do everything by experimentation. <clears throat> so, we're already 10 minutes into this video. 10 minutes and 30 seconds. Okay, that's it on this one. Thanks for watching.